The AZ500 exam for the Azure Security Engineer Associate title is very challenging, and the skills measured say there is an update for June 2021, and that's just the most recent update to the exam. I've actually helped thousands of candidates get further, faster preparing for AZ500, and today I'm going to take you through what's expected of you in order to pass this exam, as well as the recent changes. But most importantly, if you can stay with me to the end of this video, I will point you to the roadmap that will help you prepare fast, effectively, and free. So let's talk fast, effective AZ500 exam prep for June 2021. So I want to talk to you today about what's new on the AZ500 exam, and not just for June, I must confess. I want to prepare you for June, but we're going to talk about the changes that have happened over the course of 2021. I want to cover a couple of FAQs that will help you determine if you're really prepared, if you're a good candidate, and most importantly, I want to point you in the direction that will get you the resources you need to prepare fast, effectively, and by and large, free, for this exam. There are some great free resources, uh, some of which come from Microsoft, some from myself, and some elsewhere. So what can you expect on the AZ500 exam? I have folks come and ask me if I feel like they can pass the exam based on their experience. And sometimes they have hands-on experience, sometimes they're new to cloud, sometimes they're an expert somewhere else. So when we look at Microsoft Certification Pass, the associate level exams like the Security Engineer Associate, uh, fall in the middle in terms of depth and complexity. They assume you have a certain amount of experience. So when we think about fundamentals exams, there's an assumption there that you're just getting started. With the associate level exam, there's an expectation that you have a couple of years of hands-on experience, which means technically this exam is going to be fairly deep. It is a single exam to get that certification, but it's not a lightweight exam, it's pretty serious. And I like to say that AZ500 is kind of like the Grand Canyon in that it is both very broad and very deep. It's going to cover a wide range of technology at a deeply technical level. There is an expectation that you know these technologies inside and out. You're not going to get beginner level questions. And there is an expectation that you have hands-on experience. If you don't go into this exam with hands-on experience, you're going to be in trouble. If you don't have access to an Azure subscription, do not worry. Watch to the end of this video. This is a short video and I will point you to the spot that will lead you to the right approach to get this exam behind you even without an Azure subscription. So this exam has four objective domains. That hasn't changed in quite a long time, as long as I can remember. And Let's just jump into the changes that happened. But, but do know that if you've already started preparing, maybe you started preparing last year, your existing prep should be good all the way back to November 2020, which was the last major update to this exam. So if I look at the exam update history, back in November 2020, there was a major update. There were new line items. There was a, a restructuring of the objectives on the exam is what I would call it. And then in January, late January, we saw very minor changes. In late March 2021, we saw very minor changes. And what's coming in June is the most minor change of all. Bottom line is these changes are additive and incremental. Nothing has been removed from the exam. Just a few minor line items have been added. So if you started prepping for AZ500 a few months ago and got sidetracked, just keep on trucking. All that existing prep back to November is 100% good. Uh, quickly, I want to talk about some branding changes that happened at Microsoft Ignite in September 2020. You need to be familiar with because they started creeping into the exam in January 2021, and you need to know the naming differences. So Microsoft 365 Defender is the component of the new Microsoft Defender family that focuses on email, client endpoints, identity, and apps. This is not AZ500 material, this is MS500 material, so for AZ500 you can ignore it. However, the Azure Defender family of solutions includes focus on server endpoints, containers, networks, managed apps, SQL Server, storage. By and large, what this means are solutions you may be familiar with that are simply called by new names. You just need to know what those new names are, by and large. 
So let's talk about what came in Azure Defender. So there were quite a few features just lumped into Azure Security Center that get called out now in the branding. So Azure Defender for servers, for Kubernetes, for IoT, and for SQL. So Azure Defender for SQL was the one that had something of a unique name in that it was Advanced Threat Protection for SQL. So bottom line, you may not see questions on all of these technologies on the exam, but you'll want to be familiar with them, certainly in name. And many of them require a little more than checking a box to enable them. So it, it's really just about being familiar with the branding changes here. So let's quickly run through the changes to the AZ500 exam in 2021, and then I'll get you pointed to that training material so you can get on your way. So in January 2021, we saw changes to objective domains two and four. So in Implement Platform Protection, we saw the addition of Implement Azure Firewall Manager, which is a service that gives us central security policy and route management for our cloud-based security perimeters in Azure. So if you're not familiar with Azure Firewall Manager, definitely take a look. And in the Secure Data and Applications Objective Domain, which is the fourth, we see Azure Defender coming into the exam for the first time in Configure Azure Defender for Storage, Configure Azure Defender for SQL, and Configure Azure Defender for Key Vault. So we know these three are definitely in scope. They're called out explicitly. So these are the three I would focus on for the exam. So make sure you cover those January updates. Now let's talk about the March updates. So in March, we saw changes in objective domains one and three. So specifically what we saw here in domain one, we saw the addition of manage administrative units. So administrative units is a relatively new construct in the life of Azure Active Directory. If you're not familiar, administrative units in Azure AD, you can think of them as a container for resources in Azure Active Directory that contain users and groups. We can use these to assign staff to admin roles that are scoped to an administrative unit. In that respect, they remind me a lot of organizational units or OUs in Active Directory. Not exactly the same thing, but conceptually very similar just to give you a concept to anchor it to. And basically unit scoped admins can only manage users and groups in their administrative units. So you could use this for business units, for, for office branches, for specific schools in a school system, for example. So, so lots of options here for delegating administration to a subset of users in an environment. But users and groups are all that can fall into these containers and it's scoping the admins down to just their administrative units. So I, if you're an Active Directory person, I tie it back to organizational units because it's a similar concept. So in Objective Domain 3, which is Manage Security Operations, we saw Configure Workflow Automation by using Azure Security Center. So you want to touch on this feature in Azure Security Center. Uh, where we're looking at automated response in a security context. Now we saw a change in wording in configure a playbook by using Azure Sentinel. It was just a minor wording change. It's really a, a nothing burger here. So just know that you need to be familiar with playbooks in Azure Sentinel, uh, which came into the exam late last year in that November refresh. So it's minor stuff. And the most minor change of all comes in June 2021, where we see a single line item updated. And that's where activate and configure PIM changes to configure PIM. So if you know how to configure privilege identity management, I figure you know how to activate your profile anyway. So this is really just effectively no change at all. But when this document gets touched, Microsoft surfaces that as an update. But I'm here to say it's nothing at all for you to worry about. Now, if you need to prepare for this exam, even if you don't have access to an Azure subscription, Watch the link I have in the comments and at the end of this video to my How Should I Prepare video. It's five minutes long. I'm going to get you hooked up with an exam study guide, point you to the right MS Learn material. I've got a full series over on LinkedIn Learning and on YouTube. And anything you don't have access to, you can come to Uncle Pete and I'll help you get access to that material. Now, I do point you to a trial membership for some free practice exams. So I wanted to tell you that here on June 1st, I'm going to be publishing an updated practice exam for AZ500. I expect it'll be about 100 questions. It will not require a sign-on. You can simply go to the URL and check it out. So keep an eye out 
uh, in the description under this video, reach out to me on LinkedIn and I will point you to that updated exam on June 1st when I publish it and I hope you use it with my compliment. And again, though, get that video. That's the best five minutes you're going to spend to get yourself running down the road to effectively pass the AZ500 exam on your first try. And that's it for our AZ500 exam refresh for June. I hope you get value out of my series. If you haven't uh, visited me before, definitely subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get a heads up every time I drop a free security certification video. All my content tends to be free and focused on helping you get further faster. I hope to see you again. And until next time, take care and stay safe.